I'm David Cahoon, Curator of Manuscripts at the Turnbull, which means that I build the manuscripts collection and help people use it. Primary sources to me are the documents of the time that record the experience of things as they happened. So that to me, as a manuscript curator, that's particularly things like diaries and letters, or more recently emails and Facebook pages, but it can include artworks, photographs, maps, and ephemera, which is things like posters, pamphlets, and leaflets. Ephemera interests me. That's the, the, the everyday stuff that you get in your letterbox. And of course around election time you get a lot of it. And this, this, this here is just some of the ephemera for the 1946 election. So here's Labour saying, woman's place in the sun, a message to all the women of New Zealand saying why you should vote for Labour. Or this one from Labour, um, comparing their attitude to social security. The National Party says social security is applied lunacy. The Labour Party says social security is applied Christianity. So there you are. The National Party, on the other hand, says, whose future is it anyway? The future is with National. And um, Labour won, but only just. Mm. Primary sources that I really like working with are diaries, because there's such a wide variety of them. And you get such a good insight, often, into what sort of person you're, you're dealing with. The one that I've done a lot of work on is the diaries of Jack Lovelock. Jack Lovelock was a runner, New Zealand runner, who broke the world record in 1933 and then won Olympic gold in 1936, one of the great New Zealand sporting performances. But unlike most sports people, he kept very detailed diaries of what he did. And you get a real sense of what he was like and the intensity of which he viewed the sport. It was his overriding passion and you see that. 1936 when he won the Olympic gold medal. He gives a description of the race and he finishes with these sort of relieved words really. It was undoubtedly the most beautifully executed race of my career, a true climax to eight years steady work and artistic creation. Well another primary source of course that's always of interest and great research use of photographs. The huge collection that we've re recently taken in at the library that's proved of great interest to researchers is the White's aviation photographs. Now Leo White was an aviator and a photographer. He started flying in the 1920s, developed an interest in photography, and in the 1940s he started a business, White's Aviation, which went around the country taking photographs from the air. He made a living selling these photographs to all around the country. For researchers, they're fascinating because you can just find anywhere. You can find your town, your suburb, your street, your farm. There'll be a photograph of it from the 50s or the 60s or the 70s. At the moment, we're digitising the White's Aviation collections, and we've done a lot of them, but soon you'll be able to see most of them online. Now, there's 90,000 odd images, so uh, there's a lot there. Once we've digitised them, you'll be able to see online all those photographs and be able to have a look at your particular area or locality and see how it's changed over time. Of course, all this material isn't just collected for nothing, it's, it's collected so that people can use it. And, and historians and researchers of all kinds are every day coming into our reading rooms and using it to write new books, documentaries, films, all sorts of things. And seeing those things created and published is the real satisfaction that I get out of this job.